So hello friends. So in uh, previous class, we have started with a uh, few numericals, and uh, um, last uh, numerical which we were discussing was this fourth numerical. Let us complete this numerical first, and then we'll move ahead. Uh, so a four pole lap wound DC motor. Has 540 conductors. It is given, and uh, it is uh, its speed is uh, found to be 1000 RPM when it is made to run light. Run light means uh, at no load speed. Uh, uh, at no load, whenever uh, load is not there, that is run light. So from this we'll start writing given data first. So a four pole that is P is equal to four given. Then lap wound, lap wound DC motor means um, A is equal to P is equal to four. It is given as P is number of poles equal to four. So A is equal to P is equal to four. That is for lap wound DC motor has 540 conductors. So that is Z value is given. So Z is equal to 540. Then uh, its speed, no load speed, is found to be 1000 RPM. So N NL that is no load that is 1000 RPM. Then the flux per pole is 25 milliampere. So that means uh, phi is given as 25 into 10 raised to minus 3 weber. Then it is connected to 230 volt DC supply. So capital V is given supply voltage that is 230 volt. So V is equal to 230 volt. So capital will V means uh, if uh, DC symbols are there, generally in our electronics we are assuming it as uh, capital letters. And for instantaneous, uh, uh, we are assuming that as a Small letters, so instantaneous voltage, so it will be small v. Instantaneous current, small i, and uh, if it is a constant current, that is DC. So it, uh, we are cap uh, indicating it in a capital letter. Okay. Then the armature resistance is 0.8 ohm. That is R A is given as 0.8 ohm, and we need to calculate the um, induced EMF. That is. EB that EMF, then armature current IA, and the stray losses. So one by one we'll see. So given data we have written from this uh, numerical. So P is four, A is equal to P is equal to four, Z is five hundred forty, phi is twenty five into ten raised to minus three, M no load is thousand uh, RPM, V is equal to two thirty, R A is point eight. So now. EB directly you know the formula. EB is equal to phi P N Z by sixty uh, A. So EB we are calculating phi value is given twenty five into ten raised to minus three. P value is given as four. N it is given as thousand. Z five hundred forty sixty constant and A as it is lap long. A is equal to P is equal to four. So after substituting this value, if we'll simplify this. Will get EB is equal to 225 volts. So first answer we got. Now IA. So from uh, voltage equation we can write uh, V is equal to uh, EB plus IARA or um, IA is equal to uh, V minus EB upon RA. So this um, values will substitute. I is equal to V is 230 volt, EB is 225. Just we have calculated. Then RA is given as 0.8 ohm. So 230 minus 225 upon 0.8. So it comes out to be 6.25 amperes. So I is equal to 6.25 amperes. And the last quantity asked is the stray losses. 
so stray losses as we know that stray losses are eb into ia and this should be uh, at no load values so uh, stray losses um, or the loss torque that is calculated from eb 0 into ia 0 where this zero indicates the no load value so these losses uh, eb 0 we have already calculated and ia 0 also we have calculated because all these values we have calculated it for when the motor was run light that is no load so for no load eb is 225 and ia is 6.25 so multiply these two so eb into ia 225 into 6.25 so it comes out to be 1406.25 watts as it is a stray loss or it is simply a power no uh, e into i or v into i that is power so its unit is watt so i hope you have understood this uh, problems now let us move to uh, various types of dc motors so dc motors uh they are available in uh three basically type one is dc shunt motor another is dc series motor and dc compound motor and dc compound motor is further classified as long shunt and short shunt dc motor so basically this uh, classification is based on the uh, there are two uh, windings in uh, case of dc motor one is the field winding and another is the armature winding so based on how this field and armature windings are placed so that uh, this classification is made uh, based on that so in shunt motor your uh, armature and uh, field winding they will be in shunt that is parallel to each other then in series motor this field winding and armature winding both will be connected in series and in compound motor there will be a combination of series and parallel so we will see one by one in detail so first dc shunt motor so as i have told you this dc shunt motor this is the armature winding this is the shunt winding uh, sorry field winding and both are connected in parallel so these two windings they are connected in parallel to each other and this is connected to supply so that means the supply voltage which is a constant value which is applied to this uh, shunt field winding and uh, current il will be drawn uh, as it is a motor uh, i have written here a symbol as it is a uh, running as a motor and this is the shaft to which load is connected so that's why this is the motor uh, in usually in armature you have to write that symbol whether it is operating as a motor or generator so m or g you can write then these are the brushes and this is connected across this so il is the supply current which is drawn from this total supply voltage v applied then this il will be divided in two components as ia and isa as this is the shunt motor means these two windings field winding and armature winding they are parallel to each other so total current drawn is il ish is the shunt current and ia is the armature current whereas the uh, armature resistance it is indicated as ra and uh, field uh, resistance uh, which is connected in shunt it is uh, referred as rsh now values of ra and rsh are constant usually the value of ra it is uh, of the order of uh, means uh, it is less than 1 ohm whereas rsh is uh, having more value so um, it is uh, roughly uh, more than 100 uh, ohms you can say okay so il is equal to ia plus ish and ish you can find out by uh, dividing this supply voltage by the rsh so ish will be equal to v upon rsh so that will be ish now uh, from voltage equation we can write v is equal to eb plus iara 
plus V brush. V brush is the drop across this brushes. Usually it is of the order of one or two volts. So uh, you can neglect this uh, V brush also. So it will be V is equal to EB plus IA into IA. Right. Now flux produced by the field winding, it is proportional to current passing through it, that is ISH. <clears throat> because in order to uh, create two fields, one is created by this field main uh, um, flux, you can say it is created by this uh, field winding. So that is as supply voltage V is constant, R SH is constant, this ISH value will be constant. So the main flux, which is created by this field winding, as ISH is constant, that flux will be a constant value, right? So phi is proportional to ISH. And since our supply voltage is constant, the value of RSH is constant. So the flux produced will be having a constant uh, in case of DC shunt motor. And that's why it is also called as the constant flux motor. Okay, so I hope this much is sufficient for uh, um, a DC shunt motor. So in this, uh, I'll revise it once. In this type, the field winding is connected across the armature winding and the combination is connected across the supply. <coughs> if RSH is the resistance of the shunt field winding, and RA is the resistance of armature field winding, then uh, the values of RA and RSH, I already told you, RA is very, very small, while RSH is quite large as compared to RA. Hence, shunt field winding has more number of turns with less cross-sectional area. Right? Then from voltage equation, we can uh, write the um, equations. Uh, uh, this, uh, if um, we'll apply um, KVL for this loop voltage equation, it is V is equal to EB plus IRA plus V brush. Whereas V brush is usually of the order of one or two volts, so you can neglect it. So V is equal to EB plus IRA, and the total current drawn from this uh, supply, it is IL, which is distributed as IA and ISH. Uh, so IL is equal to IA plus ISH. And ISH, we can find it out from ISH is equal to V upon RSH. OK. Now, as this ISH is constant, because V is constant, RSH is constant. So ISH is constant. and the flux is produced, main flux is produced in field winding, which is due to the ISH. So phi is proportional to ISH. And as ISH is constant, this value of flux will be constant. And that's why this motor is also referred as constant flux motor. OK? Then let us see the DC series motor. Now, in case of series motor, both the winding, armature and field winding, they are connected in series. That's why the name series DC motor. When they were connected in parallel to each other, shunt to each other, then uh, this was called as DC shunt motor. So now, in case of series motor, both the windings are in series. This is the armature winding, uh, as it is, uh, rest symbols are same as it is running as a motor. So I have written here motor. This is the armature and these are the brushes shown. This is the load <coughs> connected on the shaft. RA is the resistance of this armature winding. R <coughs> AC is the resistance of now this series uh, winding. Field winding, as it is connected in series, we are referring this resistance as RAC. And uh, in previous case, as it was in shunt, the resistance was referred as RSA, shunt resistance. Now, in this 
the uh, as this is uh, connected across the supply voltage the current drawn is il and this il now it is same as the current flowing through this field winding as well as through armature winding so if current flowing through this series winding uh, uh, series uh, field winding is iac and current entering in armature is ia then all these currents il and iac and ia they are the same as it is flowing in only one loop so in case of series motor il is equal to iac is equal to i whereas in case of shunt motor il is equal to ia plus ish so this is the difference okay so while solving the numericals you uh, try to draw these uh, diagrams and from that diagrams you will be able to uh, means no need to remember these equations whether these currents are equal or uh, it is a parallel combination and all okay so this is the current equation and uh, voltage equation if you will apply kvl for this then v is equal to eb plus ia into bracket ra plus rac as v brush you can neglect uh, as it is its value is 1 uh, or 2 volts so if we we'll neglect this v brush then v is equal to eb plus ia into bracket ra plus rac right because ia and rac are same so that's why this is the equation v is equal to eb plus ia into bracket ra plus rac huh? plus v brush if you will neglect this v brush then it will be simply this voltage equation okay now this supply voltage has to overcome the drop across series field winding in addition to eb and drop across the armature winding okay in series motor the entire armature current is passing through the series field so the flux produced in the main winding is proportional to armature current because main winding is this field winding and flux is produced due to the current flowing through this field winding and current flowing through field winding it is same as il iac or ia so um, uh, that means this flux phi it is proportional to iac or ia so phi is proportional to iac or i therefore you can say um, torque of this series motor it is phi into i torque is proportional to phi into i and phi in case of series motor is um, proportional to i so it is i square and that's why torque of uh, series motor is very high so this uh, basic characteristics of this motor is it is having a high starting torque okay so i hope you yeah, understood uh, this or i um, revise it uh, for dc series motor so in this type of motor the series field winding is connected uh, in series with the armature and the supply so as shown in the figure now let rse be the resistance of the series field winding then the value of rac is very small and it is made of small number of turns having large cross section area right then voltage equation and current equation you can write from this il is equal to iac is equal to ia and voltage equation v is equal to eb plus ia into bracket ra plus rac okay and the supply voltage has to overcome the drop across series field winding in addition to eb and drop across armature winding okay and in series motor entire armature current it is passing through the series field winding so the flux produced is proportional to the armature current that is phi is equal to phi is proportional to ia for series motor okay then next is the compound motor which is of uh, two types one is long shunt and another is short shunt so for long shunt we'll see so
So this, uh, as I have told you, uh, it is a combination of both series and field. So this series winding is also there, and field uh, uh, shunt field winding is also there. So uh, field winding is in shunt as well as in series with this armature. So long shunt means this connection is connected over here, and for short shunt, it is this field winding is connected over here. That means. the shunt winding is exactly connected across armature winding in case of short shunt motor but this type of motor nobody is preferring for any of the application okay so that's why we will not um, study in detail this uh, motor and uh, there won't be any numerical also based on this even long shunt means instead of connecting this um, shunt winding Uh, to across armature it will be connected to the um, armature winding as well as the series winding of the steel so for both this combination this is uh, shunt winding is connected across this so this is the only difference for long shunt and short shunt for short shunt it is connected here this field winding uh, rsh is connected over here and for long shunt it is connected over here so for long shunt the total current drawn from the supply is il here now il is divided as uh, ish and isc <coughs> isc is same as ia okay so il is equal to ish plus ia also and ish you can find by supply voltage v divided by rsh uh, is equal to isc and uh, from voltage equation you can write v is equal to eb plus ia into bracket ra plus rac if we we'll neglect v brush then it is only this v is equal to eb plus ia into bracket ra plus rac okay so this long shunt uh, compound motor can be cumulative or differential type similarly short shunt uh, compound motor can be cumulative or differential now the major characteristics of this uh, dc compound motor uh, long shunt which is used uh, over dc series motor is the only advantage as this dc series motors they cannot be um, operated on the no load speed because its uh, starting torque is very high so that condition should be avoided in case of series motor whereas that condition is allowed in case of dc compound motor that is the only difference between this okay and then short shunt so short shunt as the shunt winding is connected over here it is short shunt il is equal to isc and il is equal to ia plus ish because il is same as current flowing through isc so it is same as isc and it is divided here so it is ia plus isc okay then the drop across shunt field winding is to be calculated from the voltage voltage equation so voltage equation is v is equal to eb plus isc rac plus ia ra plus v brush if we we'll neglect v brush and isc is equal to il so you can write v is equal to eb plus il uh, rac plus ia ra v brush you can neglect it okay then shunt current now ish will be equal to if you will apply kvl for this particular loop then you will be able to find v is equal to uh, sorry v minus this drop that is il into rsc that is the effective voltage applied across this shunt field winding that is v minus il into rsc drop across this and divided by rsc will be the isc time right that will be that's all so usually uh, the numericals will be asked on first two type dc shunt motor and dc series motor compound motor uh, nobody will be interested to operate it. okay then torque and speed equations of dc motor so before uh, analyzing the various characteristics of motor let us revise the torque and speed equations 
as applied to various types of motors. So now we know torque is directly proportional to phi into IA <coughs> from torque equation. What is the torque equation? T, um, uh, T is equal to uh, TA rather. TA is equal to 1 upon 2 pi phi into IA into P Z upon A. Now 1 upon 2 pi or 0.159 is a constant value. Then P into Z upon A, it is also a constant value. So um, from torque equation, these terms are constant. So torque will be proportional to phi into IA. That means torque is depending on only phi and IA values as these values are constant, right? Now phi is the flux produced by the field winding and it is proportional to the current passing through the field winding. So phi is directly proportional to I suffix field. So phi is proportional to I field. Now this I field means the current flowing through field winding. Now, whether it is a stunt motor or series motor, depending on that, this phi uh, I field will change. This I field will be maybe ISH or IA. So, depending on that, this phi will be very uh, various for various motors. Okay. Now, for DC shunt motor, ISH is constant because. ISH is, divided, ISH is equal to V upon uh, RSH. Now, supply voltage is almost constant and RSH is constant. So, as RSH and V is constant, this ISH value will be constant. So, as phi is constant, so T will be proportional to only IA. This phi will be a constant value as shunt uh, current is constant. So, torque is proportional to IA for DC shunt motors. Okay. Now, if we see it for DC series motor, then in case of series motor, this ISE, it is same as IA. Therefore, the flux phi, it is proportional to the current, armature current IA. That's why Torque as torque is proportional to phi into I and phi is proportional to I in case of series motor. So I will replace this phi by I. So it will be torque is proportional to I into I that is I A square. So that's why torque is proportional to I A square for DC series motor. And that's why I have already told you that torque of DC series motor it is very high and it is used for high starting torque applications. And in case of shunt motor, as torque is proportional to IA, it is almost a constant speed motor. So it is used for moderate torque and constant speed type of applications. Okay. Now, similarly, EB, it is equal to um, we have already derived this equation. EB is equal to phi P N Z by 60A. Right? Now, uh, P Z 60A. All these are constant terms. So, EB, it is proportional to phi and N. Right? So, EB is proportional to phi into N. That is, N is proportional to EB upon phi. So, you can write this re relation. N is proportional to EB upon phi. Now, from uh, voltage equation, you can find the value of EB as V minus IARA if we are neglecting the brush drop, that is V brush. So, EB is equal to V minus IARA. So, for shunt motor, as flux phi is constant, we can um, uh, remove this constant in proportionality sign. So, N is proportional to EB, that is V minus IAD. So, for shunt motors, N is proportional to V minus IAD, whereas for series motor, this phi is nothing but it is proportional to IA. So, that's why this for series motor, N is proportional to V minus IA into bracket RA plus RAC, 
divided by i so these relations play an important role in understanding the various characteristics of different types of motors now before solving uh, numericals which will be uh, covering in uh, next uh, two three lectures so most, uh, because uh, most of the time uh, numericals are uh, asked in the exam so we'll give major stress on numericals so before solving uh, numericals in uh, next uh, two classes because i don't think time will permit us today for solving the numericals so we'll uh, revise the important formulas which will be required to solve the numericals so that you can uh, revise these or you can memorize them and uh, which will be helpful for solving the numericals so we'll be solving it uh, next two three classes so now the emf equation for a dc generator uh, dc generator is generating the emf and that emf equation we have already derived e is equal to 5 p n z upon 60 a so this is the emf equation where phi is the flux in weber p number of poles n is the speed z are the number of conductors 60 constant and a a is equal to p for lap type of winding and a is equal to 2 for wave type of winding so this uh, we are already seen so this is important formula <coughs> which will be required and in uh, if this dc machine it is used as a generator only one formula will be requiring and if it is operating as if it is a motor then that will be called as a back emf eb here it will be called as eg generated emf so eb it is equal to same formula phi p n z upon 60 a volts where phi is the flux in weber p number of poles n is in speed in rpm then z number of conductors and a it is equal to p for lap winding and a is equal to 2 for wave winding so this is also one important formula which you have to remember and then the voltage equation so from the equivalent circuit we have written the voltage equation as v is equal to eb plus ira plus brush drop so eb is the back emf uh, which is this eb and plus ira that is the drop across armature and plus the v brush brush drop so usually of the order of 1 to 2 volt so this is the uh, equation um, voltage equation and from this voltage equation if we we'll neglect this brush drop we'll be able to find the armature current as armature current ia is equal to v minus eb upon ra so that is ia is equal to v minus eb upon ra so this is also one of the important formula which you will be requiring for solving the numericals the next is the power developed so power developed it is usually given by t into w or omega t into omega where t is the torque in newton meter and omega is the angular speed in radians per second and omega is uh, given by 2 pi n by 60 so this p is equal to ta into 2 pi n by 60 so that is the uh, formula which we will be requiring also this power it is equal to eb into ia where uh, where are if uh, we want to find the loss torque or the stray losses that is eb 0 into ia 0 whereas 0 indicates the no load uh, speed so uh, at no load speed the value of back emf eb0 and the required armature current is ia0 so eb0 into ia0 will be the um, you can say stray loss or the um, power which is lost so t lost uh, p lost you can say okay um, then ta ta is equal to 1 upon 2 pi phi into ia into pz upon a or it is same as 1 upon 2 pi it is 0.159 into phi into ia into p into z upon a newton meter and it is torque it is newton meter so this is the torque equation of the 
DC motor, armature torque of the uh, DC motor. So you can remember where phi is the flux in Weber, I is the armature current, P number of poles, Z uh, number of conductors, and A, it is same as previous, A is equal to P for lap winding, and A is equal to Q for wave winding. Then, uh, important formula is for uh, shunt motor and series motor. For shunt motor, you have to remember this diagram and uh, nothing special in remembering. When both the uh, windings, armature and field, they are connected in shunt. That is parallel to this supply voltage. So IL, it is equal to ISH plus IA and ISH you can find by V upon RSH and phi is proportional to ISH. So it is a constant flux uh, motor. So this is, these are the equations which we will be requiring for solving this and these you can easily uh, write. And torque, torque equation you can say, torque is proportional to phi into I, phi is constant, so torque for shunt motor it is proportional to I. Whereas for series motor, that torque is proportional to phi into I and phi is proportional to uh, same as IA, so phi is proportional to IA, so torque is proportional to IA square. So that one more equation will be requiring which I have written over here, I think. So then uh, for a DC series motor, this is the voltage equation, V is equal to EB plus IA into bracket RA plus RAC. And in case of series motor, both these resistances, RA and RAC, as they are in series, their values are very small. Uh, both are uh, almost uh, less than one. Okay. Only for shunt motor, uh, shunt winding resistance is more. So this you keep in mind. Okay. Then phi is proportional to IA for series motor. Okay. Torque equations I have written over here. So torque is proportional to phi into IA. So this is from torque equation as the other quantities 0.159 P into Z into a, uh, B, Z upon A into 0 0.159. As these are the constant quantities, P is directly proportional to phi into I. Okay. So, uh, as phi is proportional to I field, for shunt motors, torque is proportional to I. And for series motor, torque is proportional to I square. Then from the EB equation equal to phi P and Z upon 60A, we can write that these quantities are uh, constant P, Z, 60A constant. So, EB is proportional to phi into N. So, from that, N is proportional to EB upon phi. So, for shunt motor, as phi is constant, this will be removed. So, N is proportional to EB and EB you can write it from the voltage equation as N is proportional to V minus IARA. And for series motor, flux phi is proportional to IA. So, this will be divided by IA and this is um, N is proportional to V minus IA into bracket RA plus RAC divided by IA. So I hope these much uh, formulas will be needed to solve the numericals. So let us stop here for uh, today's discussion and um, in next class we will be starting, uh, we will be solving the numericals. So please uh, Try to revise all these formulas and uh, try to remember. So let us stop here today. Thank you. Bye. Good day. Take care.